Good evening and welcome to the Hanson Select Board Tuesday, July 9th, 2024 meeting. This meeting is being recorded by Whitman Hanson Community Access Television. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, we have a whirlwind agenda, but we're not gonna get to that quite yet because we have an executive session. Uh, pursuant to open meeting law, chapter 30A, section 21A3, to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigating position of the public body and the chair so declares. Litigation discussions, Administrative Professionals Union and executive session pursuant to open meeting law chapter 30A section 21A7 to review and approve executive Senate session minutes not to be released June 25th, 2024. I will entertain a motion to enter executive session. So moved. Second. Roll call. Aye. 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 We're entering executive session, um, and when we end, we will open, uh, we will end and we will come into open session. So thank you, and we will talk to you in a few minutes. All right, good evening, and welcome back to our July 9th, 2024 Hanson Select Board meeting. Um, and as usual, we have a jam-packed agenda. I'm going to... Um, defer to you, Mr. Hill, to read the public announcements, and then we'll get into it. Very good. Uh, we are looking for citizens at large to become members of the following committees. Bylaw Committee, Cable and Internet Committee, Capital Improvement Committee, Cultural Council, Economic Development Committee, Energy Committee, Historical Commission, Memorial Day and Patriotic Observance Committee, Recreation Commission, and the Zoning Board of Appeals. Volunteer applications may be found at the town website, which is www.hanson-mass.gov, or by calling the select board's office at 781-293-2131. This is a reminder that all who are reappointed to their res respective boards, committees, and commissions must be sworn by the town clerk before participating in a first meeting of the fiscal year. Um, and as far as upcoming select board meetings, there's a meeting on July 16th, August 6th, and August 20th. Thank you. Okay, lovely. Thank you, Mr. Hill. Um, well, let's kick it off, shall we, with a little bit of a celebration. Plymouth County Opera Check presentation. We love it. We love it when people bring us money. <laughs> um, so uh, with that, gentlemen, um, you can take the... Um, Inquisition uh, yes. <laughs> seats here. Where were you on the night of the fifth? Right. Um, we're very comfortable in these seats now. <laughs> <laughs> we like it. Um, thank you, Madam Chair, to you, the members. I'm Plymouth County Commissioner Jared Valenzuela and Chairman. I'm joined uh, this evening by State Senator Michael Brady. I'm real pleased to be here to present the town answer with a check for $448,024 uh, for a new ambulance. Before I forget, I do want to just extend the regrets to my colleagues, Commissioner Wright and Commissioner Hanley. They have conflicts this evening, as well as Treasurer O'Brien. Uh, we are enjoying the frequency of being in Hanson. Uh, as we do begin to wind this program down, it's hard to believe that two and a half years has gone by since the past. Uh, as you may well be aware, December 31st, 2024 is the deadline for the county to commit these funds. And of course, we've communicated um, through, these, uh, through Ms. Green and um, in the other administrators in the county, a September 30th deadline to have those funds committed and have the application. And reasoning for that is we want to be able to pivot in case there are communities that don't use their full allocation. We can then reallocate to communities that have a need. Uh, we have been grateful for the partnership with the town of Hanson, with Ms. Green, with your entire staff in the finance department and the town accountant's office. Uh, it's been a great collaboration, and uh, we are, again, grateful for uh, for that collaboration. It can't work without without the towns and the county working together. Uh, we're really proud of that. So um, before I say anything further, I'd just like to ask Senator Brady if you'd like to say a few words. And Thank you, Commissioner. And to you, Madam Chair, I want to thank uh, the select board for having us here tonight and, and thank the county and, and Ms. Green and everyone else working together. Um, way back under the former administration in the corner office, they didn't want the counties to control them. They want to control it themselves. And yep. 
through the efforts of the Plymouth County delegation and the treasurer, they were better expediting the money into these towns faster than if it would have been from the Cardinal Office under the former administration. As we know, the CARES Act was very helpful and the SAPA money was very helpful to the town. And, uh, I'm just grateful to be a part of it and to support the county in this endeavor. And uh, just to let you know on a separate note, um, we did pass a budget in the House and the Senate and the Governor. It's in a conference committee. Hopefully we'll get that done soon. And then we passed an energy bill and we are doing an economic development bill this week in the Senate. And there'll be many for different uh, towns in the county as well. So. Uh, Senator Brady, what's your ETA? Um, you know, we want to know about the money. When are we going to hear about particularly what we're going to get for regional transportation reimbursement and per people? Well, we we put some amendments into the budget, but we're going to see what comes up with the final because, as you know, there's always a difference between the House and the Senate. Yep. But as soon as I get that informed, have to pass on to you. And also, I think you're being a little bit humble, which you typically are. I do want, I, to, some of you guys may not remember this because you weren't on the board at the time, but um, when the question of whether the state should administer this money or the county should administer this money, um, Senator Brady reached out to this to the board and the members of the board and our town administrator at the time and said, I very strongly advocate that you guys try to have the um, county do this because I think that there's going to be better skills of economy. You guys won't be just one little fish in a huge ocean. You know, you'll be working with people that you know. Um, you know, you'll be working with people that you've got a relationship with already. And we think that the overhead costs will be a lot lower. And that all has proven to be absolutely 100% true. So I thank you for that sage advice. I thank you for the wonderful job that you guys have done. Um, it's been a true pleasure and a good partnership all the way through. Thank you. And I'm glad you mentioned that, Madam Chair. Senator Brady's been one of our strongest allies and advocates in the legislature, as has Rep. Coast and former Rep. Cutler. Hanson's been very lucky to have their representation, all three of them, um, you know, now too. Um, but we couldn't do this without Senator Brady, without Rep. Coast and formerly Rep. Cutler. Um, and I appreciate that. You know, we, your constituents are our constituents. Yeah. You know, I grew up in Rockland, now I live in Plymouth, I mean, where. We're local, we're elected, and we're more responsive, I believe. And um, as, as my colleagues, we're all locally elected. You can pick up the phone and call us. Um, like you just pointed out, you know, for Plymouth County, whether it was Brockton or Plimpton and every uh, community of any size in between, we've given the same amount of energy, effort, and attention. Whereas with the Commonwealth, it's not a put down, but it's a big state, 351 communities. Um, their attention's gonna be taken up by the bigger cities. And, and we did not believe that was gonna be fair. You know, and a lot of credit to my predecessors when the administration was pressuring them to give up CARES money. Um, I believe it was Commissioner Hanley asked the governor on a call, will you commit that the, the 90 million of CARES money will remain in Plymouth County? Mm -hmm. The governor said, I will not commit to that. Mm -hmm. And Commissioner Hanley, Commissioner Wright, and my predecessor, Commissioner Blatt, said that's unacceptable to us. And, and we made sure that money stayed here. And part of the reason why we have some of the deadlines that we have now with ARPA is to make sure that money continues to stay in Plymouth County. I want to enhance and not back in Washington, D.C. and going somewhere else. So uh, we're going to do everything we can to make sure we don't turn. We didn't turn a single dime of CARES Act money back. The irony is the Commonwealth did. So if we had given the $90 million in CARES money to the state, they would have then turned it back around and given it to the Fed. We didn't do that with our CARES money. We're committed to not doing that with our ARPA money. Uh, we're on track to make sure we don't. And again, that's thanks to the collaboration and the partnership that we have at all levels. And your, your leadership on this board, the Screen's leadership, Senator Brady and the legislative delegation. And before I do forget, I do want to thank you, Madam Chair, for your uh, participation on our advisory board. That is our legislative branch, much like every layer of government is executive, the commissioners, and our advisory board is the legislative branch. We appreciate you at our meeting last month, getting our budget approved. Um, we do run a lean operation. As a matter of fact, uh, our budget's gone down by about $2 million since I was sworn in. Uh, that's not happening in any uh, government anywhere, but we're still continuing to provide this, as well as a myriad of other services. And of course, your advocacy with um, Palm Management uh, Agency, I think we're still working on the formal name, um, to continue to prove that Plymouth County is responsive to the needs of the communities and doing things that communities doing on their own could be costly and cumbersome but collaborating, working together as a county with the member communities 
uh, can really execute those economies of scale that Senator Brady had mentioned before. Well, we are huge Plymouth County fans. Um, we appreciate uh, the three of us attended, you know, a meeting that you guys had. We got so much out of it. We're looking forward to the next one. It's a great opportunity for us to network, hear what other people are doing, hear, hear the services that you're able to provide to us. And again, the scales of economy is really what's so important. You know, every dime counts and we're able to get a lot more for our, you know, for our money um, when we pu pull the pull our resources. So um, speaking of pulling resources, we can't wait to yes. hear about the check. Yes, so we have the check, like I said, for 448000 I do want to thank uh, Ms. Green and your staff. Uh, you know, the, the problem when it's in my car is it's dry erase. We're very economical at the county. A little bit of hand I can see it's been used before. Yes, it's been used. It, it, it creased down the middle. It's actually a funny story. If you can guess what community that crease happened in, I'll, 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 I can't give you more money, but I guess I can give you something. Uh, it happened in, in Hull. On a, if you've ever, if you ever go to Hull during a storm, <laughs> and. Um, there's no video evidence of this, but I walked out of a meeting giving Paul money, and that thing flew right out of my hand and almost found its way to having a beach day. But thankfully, I caught it, but in my haste to catch it, it, it took a little bit of damage. But we, I joke with Treasurer O'Brien, when the program is concluded, we're going to hang that up in his office. So. I like your frugality, that despite the damage, you're still sticking with We are, we are. I was telling Senator Brady, I was with a friend of mine, who, and I had to check in the back seat, and she remarked, she goes, oh, it's dry erase? I go, oh, we're not printing a new one every time. <laughs> there is a functionality, though. Tre Tre Treasurer O'Brien on Monday was in uh, Plymouth Court um, as a witness in a case due to the our CARES Act. Uh, somebody stole our information off of the real checks, which I've already given to, to Ms. Green, and they tried to draw $9,500 off of Wow. It. So there is an actual practical reason, aside from the usual uh, show that comes with a big check, um, the practical reason is those are fake account numbers, but there is actually a method behind them. Uh, the first <laughs> number is 1221-1620, uh, the date the Pilgrims landed in Plymouth. The second number is 521,202. Uh, that is the population of Plymouth County as of the 2020 census. And then the third number is 1685. Give a prize if anybody can guess what 1685 is. That is when Plymouth County was founded. That's right. So they merged Plymouth Colony and Mass Bay Colony in 1685. So that's when uh, my seat as commissioner and Senator Brady's seat as a member of the legislature was created, 1685. So we can go that far back. Wow, you guys are super creative. Yes, all credit to the treasurer and deputy treasurer on that one. So yeah. I'm happy to do a quick picture if that's appropriate. I'm also happy to take questions if anybody has them. Uh, Did anybody have any questions chair, for... Uh, Nope. Nope. Thank you for everything. Um, you. Paul, could we take a brief recess so that this um, love fest is not necessarily <laughs> captured? Uh, Thank you. All right, and welcome back again. Um, to the Hanson Select Board meeting of July 9th, 2024. Uh, we just had the Plymouth County ARPA check presentation. Uh, took a brief uh, recess there for photo ops um, and spared everybody that misery. Um, so now we're gonna move on to the town audit presentation. And um, did, did you want to come up and um, we, we always love to hear our audit. Um, and if you want, if you don't mind introducing yourself, and then um, I don't know if you want to just go over the management letter or hit a few high points. Um, yeah, I mean, I have some required communications sure. that I want to go yep. through, and then um, I mean, do you have a certain amount of time that you would like me to spend? I mean, not, 15, not, 20 not minutes, particularly. I I'd say, what uh, did you 15, say? 20 yeah, minutes, 15, okay. 20 sounds lovely. Okay. Yep. Uh, so I'm Frank Ceretti. I'm a partner with Markham uh, Accounts and Advisors, formerly Powers and Sullivan. We've merged with Markham uh, at the end of February. Uh, so uh, we're making our way through the merger process now. Uh, there's a lot of uh, you know, things that um, come along with that, but um, that's not important for tonight. Uh, the important thing is uh, the, how the town did with their FY23 audit. And um, I'd just like to start off by thanking the town administrator, the town accountant, the treasurer collector, and the rest of the finance team for all the uh, cooperation and assistance that we received during the course of the audit. 
everybody was really great about gathering all the information that we needed to complete the audit and uh, getting it to us timely and uh, getting us timely answers to all of our questions, which we really appreciated. So from our standpoint, we thought that the audit went very well, very smooth. Um, with that out of the way, I can uh, jump into these uh, required communications. This is a little bit formal, but I can get through it pretty quick. Uh, as the auditors, we're responsible for planning and performing the audit to provide uh, reasonable assurance that the financial statements are fairly stated in all material respects. Management is responsible for the, uh, preparation and fair presentation of the financial statements in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles. Uh, and also the design, implementation, and maintenance of internal controls relevant to the preparation and fair presentation of the financial statements that are free from material misstatement, uh, whether due to fraud or error. Uh, management is also responsible for the selection and use of appropriate accounting policies. The significant accounting policies can be found in note one of the financial statements. There were no uh, new accounting policies adopted during the year and the application of existing policies was not changed. Accounting estimates are an integral part uh, in the preparation of the financial statements, and they're based on management's knowledge and experience about past and current events and also assumptions about future events. The most significant estimates in the financial statements relate to the net pension liability, the net OPEB liability, the compensated absences liability, which relates to sick and vacation accrual, and also depreciation on fixed assets. We review the uh, underlying assumptions and the key factors that go into developing the estimates, and we find those all to be reasonable in relation to the financial statements as a whole. Uh, difficulties encountered while performing the audit, very happy to report that we didn't encounter any difficulties in dealing with management while performing the audit. Audit adjustments, our standards define an audit adjustment as a uh, proposed correction of the financial statements, and then our judgment uh, may not have been detected except through our auditing procedures, and I'm happy to report that there were no such audit adjustments that were required to be proposed. So the uh, books and records, we found them to be uh, accurate and in uh, good financial uh, condition. And the last one relates to dis disagreements with management, and our uh, standards define a disagreement with management as a matter whether or not resolved to our satisfaction that uh, concerns a financial accounting reporting or auditing matter. And again, I'm happy to report that there were no such disagreements with management that were noted during the course of the audit. So those are the required formal communications, and then I can just run through some financial highlights and uh, the management letter really quick. Um, overall results of the audit, we were able to issue an unmodified opinion on the financial statements. That's a clean opinion. It's the best you can get means the financial statements are fairly stated in all material respects in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles. Uh, all reporting deadlines were met. The information that we received was accurate. And we received uh, timely responses to our audit inquiries. And we did not identify any deficiencies in internal controls or material weaknesses that were required uh, to report to you. So no concerns uh, from that standpoint. Um, the town was able to maintain its uh, AA to uh, bond rating with Moody's, and Towns had that rating. Uh, it was uh, received that rating in 2021, and maintained that ever since. Uh, general fund and fund balance totaled $6.9 million at the end of the year. Of that, 1,700 was restricted to debt service. Uh, another 1.8 million was committed. Of the committed amount, 1.6 million relates to articles that were carried forward and then another 210,000 relates to the school stabilization fund. And you also had um, $632,000 of assigned fund balance. And of that, 479,000 is free cash that was voted to fund the uh, 2024 budget. And 153,000 is for uh, encumbrances that we carried forward to 2024. That left you with $4.5 million of unassigned fund balance. Um, that's about 15% of general fund expenditures. And that includes your general stabilization fund uh, of $1.4 million. Collections for real estate and personal property tax continue to be very strong at 99% for the commitment. So no issues there. Uh, budgetary results, uh, your operations resulted in a $574,000 increase in fund balance. And that's uh, due to a uh, revenue surplus of $986,000. And that's... Uh, 
relates to tax liens, motor vehicle excise, investment income, and intergovernmental revenue. Your expenditures also came in under budget by $896,000, and that relates to general government, public safety, and employee benefits. And then the other thing that increased your uh, fund balance was a, um, actually an increase in carry forwards of uh, $660,000. And those increases were offset by the use of $2 million of free cash that was used to fund appropriations. So that's essentially how do you, you get to your $574,000 increase. Um, these results indicate to us that your, your budget is structurally sound and that you have good budgetary controls in place. Uh, water fund on a budgetary basis, which is how you maintain your books, uh, your fund balance totaled $2.7 million. That was an increase of about $653,000 from the prior year. And that tells us that your rates are, are set to recover your costs, which is good. Um, your other post-employment benefits liability, actually for the trust, you put another $20,000 into your OPEB trust. You also received $21,000 of investment income during 2023, and that brought the balance in the trust up to $217,000. The net OPEB liability was $17 million. Uh, that's a $910,000 increase from the prior year, and that's mainly just due to uh, assumption changes about future health care costs. Uh, you have uh, what's referred to as a blended discount rate that you use for the OPEB trust, and the reason for that, uh, you have a blended, and then the, the best thing to have is really to be able to use your long-term expected rate of return on your investments, which is about 6%. But your rate that you're currently using is a blended rate, and it's 4.48%. And the reason for that is because when the actuary is determining the discount rate that needs to be used, uh, that's defined by, uh, by GAAP, that they have to take a look at how much money you have in the trust. And um, they take a look and say, okay, how many periods out can the money in the trust sustain like the benefits of current plan members? And that's called the cutoff. Well, the cutoff point is when you get out to the point where you would be able to fully fund those benefits. Once you get to the cutoff point, you don't use a blended rate anymore. You get to use a fully funded long-term rate of return, which would be the 6%. Um, but you've got $200,000 in there. It doesn't get you out that far. So that if you weren't funding at all, you'd have to use the AA municipal bond rate, which was 4.13% you were able to use a blended rate of 4.48% because you've got that $200,000 in the trust. And the reason I'm kind of belaboring this is because um, there's uh, something in the footnote, the uh, OPEP footnote called the sensitivity analysis, and it tells you what the impact of a 1% increase in the discount rate would be. So if you had more funding, you'd have a higher discount rate. Well, if you just got it to go up 1%, it would reduce the liability by $2 million. And you know, you're at you know, about four and a half, so you could get up to six, so that's, you know, one and a half percent, so that uh, would essentially give you like a $3 million decrease in the liability. And as you keep building up uh, assets in the OPEP trust, you start to have compounding interest effects and all of that. And um, I mean, it, it's a liability for services that have already been rendered, and it's, you know, it's not being funded to the level that it you know, probably should be. Um, it's gonna be funded in future years, and this is for services that were already provided. So we always, um, you know, as accountants, we're conservative. We like to try to fund those liabilities as soon as possible. And um, I don't know if it's feasible, but you might wanna take a look at how much you're contributing to the trust. You can get your actuary in. They can run different funding scenarios to show you, you know, if you put in X amount, you know, over time, and you do, you have a plan to do it, then they can take that plan and just based on a plan that you've adopted, and if you you know show that you're following that plan, then they can use that as part of projecting out you know the discount rate and the cutoff point and all that stuff, and you can get a higher rate sooner. And something that you might want to consider doing, like bringing the actuary in to talk about it and see, he can say, yeah, if you put in forty thousand a year or if you put in fifty thousand a year, you'd be able to reduce the liability so much quicker. And you'd be building up the balance, you'd have a higher discount rate and all of those things. So it's just Excuse something. Me, just a moment, our yeah. account had something. Uh, yeah, I, did, I just want to mention, you know, we've been talking about budgets and stuff, and, you know, um, I think that's like a board member from Women said, well, we're going to have um, the, retiree, the retirement board on 
is going to have an unfunded liability paid to our retirement assessment will go down. And then, because maybe that would be some money for you, but um, the plan is when that goes down, then we can start running the 17 million. So I just wanted to let you know kind of like what the long term plan is. Like when unfunded liability comes up, so we're going to Whatever we're paying for retirement stuff, I know it's not kicking over to the OCAP liability. Um, the, the fear is if that money comes down, it'll be grabbed, you know, by whoever. So, but that's the plan anyway. And kind of dovetailed into a comment that some of you need before about um, I think some county has us going um, maybe like uh, six or seven more years, and then the unfunded liability will be able to be paid. Um, the other thing that I want to mention, I hate mentioning. Um, that, you know, I love the retirees, I'm glad they get the COLAs, you know, but um, the employee contribution doesn't increase. So that get funded by employee contribution and town contribution. So that employee contribution is fixed. So every time they get a COLA increase, our retirement sets we go down. Yep. Mm -hmm. So it's, ju it's just on us when they yeah, get absolutely. the increase. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So that's all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the other thing, too, that um, is that if you you know, come up with a formal like plan and you vote, you know, that this is our policy that once the retirement system is fully funded, we're going to shift X amount of that appropriation, even if it's not the whole thing over, that your actuary can actually build that in and say, okay, out in 2036 or whatever, yeah. when did you say it was going to be fully funded? At that point, they're going to, he'll put that into the plan that you're going to start putting in $500,000 more or something, the money that was going to pension, you're going to start putting that to OPEB and that can actually help to get your discount rate up a lot sooner. That's a good idea. So my, yeah. my next trend will run the immunization schedule. And if it's going down in the future, send that to an actuary. See, I'm, you know, we'll go and select what you do because of the idea once this goes out, stop funding it. And then we'll just go from there. Because yeah, then we can formalize it. Then Have your actuary put it up. I think it months. would be good because, uh, you know, every time I hear OPEB, I'm plagued with tremendous right. guilt that we're not doing more about it. But, I, you know, I don't. The reality is, look, we just had, we just cut positions at town. Like, you know, we don't, it's not like we're floating in money and we have all this extra money, but I do like the idea that we have a plan and that we might get some credit and, you know, for a plan. And, 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 yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you guys for, for working that out. So, Eric, if you don't mind kind of taking that as it would do. Yeah. Uh, and then the net pension liability, uh, obviously with Plymouth County Retirement Association, uh, the liability was $13.9 million. Um, at the end of 12 31 22, that liability is on a calendar year basis, but it was in your 6 30 23 financials. Um, that increased by $3.5 million, and that's consistent with, with, with what we saw in retirement systems in 2022. They all had, you know, bad investment performance in that fiscal year and our calendar year and that should catch up in the next like year or two 23 should be much better but they had very big uh, net investment losses over there but that did cause your uh, the town's liability their share of the liability to increase the uh, Plymouth County retirement system was 68 percent funded and that was a decrease of seven percent from the prior year just due to the uh, the net investment losses that they incurred they used kind of a high discount rate uh, 7.875% uh, in comparison with other retirement systems across the state, but it has to go through an approval process with PEREC. Um, but it, that would definitely be looked at. It's one of the higher ones that I've seen, and um, that has the effect of lowering the assessments and um, can help with budget, but uh, it's not going to get you to your fully funded status quicker. <laughs> uh, kind of can prolong that, but if the investments do well and everything, I, I'm sure that they're looking at it very closely and there's a good plan. I'm not commenting on whether it's a good rate or a bad rate, but it is higher than what you normally see. Um, and then, uh, debt, you issued uh, just $200,000 of long-term debt during the year, and that's uh, for septic loans. Uh, left you with $2 million of governmental debt outstanding, you have $1.9 million of uh, water enterprise debt outstanding, and $100,000 short-term uh, ban for fire equipment, and your debt is uh, at about 1.3% of your expenditures. Kind of low when you look at uh, what other communities carry for debt, like usually as a rule of thumb, uh, they say that 5% is a, is a pretty reasonable ratio, and like when the uh, rating agencies look at it, I don't know if you've had any comments from the rating agencies on the uh, debt level, but 
so that can be a sign that you know maybe you're not borrowing enough to like you know make improvements i mean it's great that you can fund you know things with free cash and stuff like that but those are some of the questions that can come up um you know are you spending enough to like maintain your infrastructure and stuff like that and so it is low compared to other communities you might want to look at that in your capital plan and see if that you know is where you want to be um and uh, there was no report on federal awards this year. You didn't meet the $750,000 threshold, so we didn't have to audit any federal awards. And that takes me to the management letter, which is the last uh, item here. Uh, there were three comments in there. There was one new comment. Uh, and this, the management letter, critical in nature, doesn't highlight the things that you do well, but as I kind of said up front, there were no deficiencies in internal controls that we noted. These were just comments that we considered to be enhancements and efficiencies. There was one new comment related to reconciling the ambulance receivable uh, balance on the general ledger with the uh, aging receivable report that's provided by the third party administrator. And uh, just uh, doing like a monthly reconciliation of that, we noticed that the ledger exceeded the balance on that uh, aging report by $52,000. Uh, so we just recommend that that gets reconciled monthly. Can just put a pin in that for a second. Um, we're, what's the thought process there and, um, on the reconciliation? Uh, or, oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, that would, that would, that would be my, my responsibility. So basically what happens is um, the ambulance company, well, the ambulance company, by the time, also has the, this company bills, collects, and um, you know keeps track of all outstanding ambulance receivables. So basically, what I've been doing is just taking the reports, and um, as money comes in, I'll maybe book the commitments. But that can definitely be improved. Yeah, that's a. I'll take that constructive criticism. Okay, that's good. That can definitely be improved. I'll, be, I'll have to be responsible for that. Okay. All right. Uh, there was one comment that was resolved that related to developing a fraud, re a fraud prevention policy, and that was adopted by the board back in uh, February of 23, uh, but it got resolved this count, uh, fiscal year, so I'm reporting on that. And then there was one comment uh, that was still open. It was related to uh, completing a fraud risk assessment, and that's really uh, taking a look at the different areas in the town where there are assets, you know, cash is a big one that's susceptible to to fraud and, and theft uh, and other assets that could be similarly uh, susceptible and basically, you know, identifying those areas where there's the, where there's risk and then identifying the controls that are in place to try to prevent something like that from happening and then making an assessment of those controls and saying, okay, are we happy? Do we feel comfortable with the controls that are in place and what do we think we should be doing more? Or are we doing too much? There's like a cost benefit that goes along with it, but you just don't want to be in a place where you're not doing enough and something happens. Um, and so um, that's something that we basically recommended to all of our clients to do. Um, I know a lot of them have. Yeah, had I thank them because uh, <laughs> they first started to put those in and said all these calls came to them from my business. <laughs> so he's done a lot of them. <laughs> so is that something that we're going to get popping on with um okay and you'd involve treasurer collector yeah okay lisa and i have actually um started conversations on the front assessment okay um did anybody have any questions um okay well thank you um we always appreciate you coming and uh, making the truck and uh, being so thorough and um thanks for the update oh, my pleasure always great to be here Appreciate the work. Very yeah, good. Thank, thank you. you so and, much. And thank you. See you again next year. Yep. <laughs> okay. Uh, that brings us to a police update. Chief Mix. Good evening. Hello. It's lovely to see you, Chief Mix. Thank you for joining us. It's always lovely to be here, but <laughs> you'd be lying if you yeah, said that. I would. Be. Today's one of the lovely ones. <laughs> Some of whom, yeah, haven't been so lovely over the years. Um, I'll be fairly quick. This is um, not a ton to go over. Uh, one of the things I, I did run today, I was looking at calls for service. Uh, we've had 5,640, which is actually up a fair amount from last year at this time. Wow. We uh, eight and 900 calls. Uh, the reason for that, um, I, I think part of it is uh, 
we did do more traffic enforcement um, this year than in the past. Uh, and then the other part is we're just getting more calls. Um, you know, we had a real lull when COVID was around. It was the only thing I liked about COVID was people kind of stayed inside and didn't seem to bother each other. Um, but now they're on the boat again. So. <laughs> Um, of that, we're actually on that same note, the calls for service are up a little bit. Uh, our arrests so far this year are actually down from last year, um, not by many. So we, we've had 26 arrests right now. Um, you know, going back years ago when I first got here, we probably did about 300 arrests a year. Um, one of the reasons that those numbers are so much are down so much more um, was a number of reasons. But one of the main reasons is we... Um, there's been a shift, and we try to do that through training, too, that some minor nonviolent offenses, we try not to bring anybody in the station. Uh, we're doing the same amount of work, whether we summon somebody to court or whether we lock them up. Uh, if this tends to be any type of a violent issue, um, obviously we try to take them in. Um, the, you know, people with uh, no driver's licenses, that was uh, an is an arrestable offense. You know, unless... They're operating after, uh, you know, they're suspended for OUI or, uh, you know, some other substance issues. They're not going to be a danger to the public. They're just, I don't know, they can't pay their fines. They can't do what will tow the car and put them deeper in debt and summons them and take care of it later. So in custodies are, are down a lot. But uh, if I ran the complaints, uh, I'm sure I'd be still right around the same amount of numbers. So the same amount of work's going on. Um, a few things, too, is, uh, as you know, a couple of years ago, the uh, Post Commission, the Police Peace Officer Standard and Training Committee was created. There, finally, this year was their, uh, their third year where they are certifying everybody. So um, I think next year it'll get a little easier. Each year, um, depending upon when you came on the job and what, where, uh, you know, you fall in the alphabet, we have to do a certification. It's not that difficult, um, but it is a time-consuming uh, issue. Obviously not so much for the officers, but it definitely is for, for myself, uh, the deputy, um, you know, on the admin side. That being said, um, May and June are usually our busiest months because we have to make sure all of our training's done for the year. Since I got here 10 years ago, I've always done about 40 hours of in-service. It wasn't always mandatory. So it was at least eight hours of um, eight hours of firearms. And then we'd have uh, three to four days of mandatory training, which is set by the MPTC. Because, you know, government being what it is, you have to have multiple committees to oversee police training, not just merging them somehow when you created them. But, um, you know government thrives on bureaucracy so here we are the MPTC is the uh, municipal police training commission so they set the standards every year then post reviews to make sure that every officer has met those standards every year uh, and the deadline's always June 30th so you know June 29th I'm still scrambling with people who may have missed something because they were sick or in court uh, you know it's it's kind of like herding cats with cops between uh, the hours they work and trying to get them to training when training's available. The MPTC does not offer as many in uh, in service uh, in class in service hours anymore. Um, but it is online. I try to send the officers to class for a number of reasons. One, I think you get more out of being in the room than you do watching a video all day long. Some of the younger kids might argue with me. The other big reason I do is uh, I've it's good for networking. It's good for the officers to see other officers in other towns. And I've always called it group therapy. Because as soon as one officer starts complaining about how miserable they are about something, mm -hmm. you know, there's another town that's always going to top you. So it was mm -hmm. kind of, it was therapeutic for them too. They just don't realize it sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> so we had to get all that done uh, before June 30th, which once again we did. That leads me into, uh, let me get into the, well, I'll skip the challenges for a minute. Let me get into one other problem that we've had. Um, we partnered with Halifax, Plimpton, and Carver for grants where we got a clinician. We did hire a clinician. She was here for a few months. She was absolutely wonderful. 
Uh, I'm a huge fan of this co-response uh, model where we have mental, even without mental health stuff, if it was a non-violent thing, we'd bring her along. Uh, and uh, she was extremely, extremely helpful. Um, Braintree had an opening, and uh, what tends to be a problem in some of the small communities is we're not going to compete with them financially. So um, she left. And uh, mental health right now, if you're trying to find a clinician um, or anybody in the mental health field, good luck. They're few and far between, so we're, we're still looking, we're still trying. Um, so if anybody you know, realizes we're back to going on calls by ourselves again, it's not for a lack of trying. Uh, on another mental health issue, uh, we partnered um, a few months ago with a fairly new group in the uh, county called The Lost Team. They're volunteers, trained, who uh, come in and assist uh, victims uh, of suicide. So the family members, the survivors of suicides, they come in and help. We've since partnered with them, and sadly I've had to already use them. Uh, but they, they've, you know, once again, it's another great resource. Constantly trying to find those other groups, those other entities that can help us and, uh, and still serve the citizens in the town. That being noted, for years now we've been part of PCO Hope, which is the um, substance abuse interdiction. They um, they got another grant, which is nice. We're going to be doing uh, some training with them, which is a positive too, because the grant's going to pay for be able to pay for my training. So uh, it won't be coming out of our pockets. It's just finding the time to get the officers herded back together to do this. Um, Good news is uh, we, our overdoses last year, I just got the numbers, our overdoses last year were zero, uh, fatal overdoses, excuse me, were zero. So that's wonderful. Overdoses that we needed what I call a follow-up where we had to send an officer on with a recovery coach uh, was 17. Um, not kind of on par with where we've been. Most of the county was up a couple of percentage points um, in either their fatalities or their, you know, their responses. So we're, we're doing well there. Another kind of twist in that grant is um, the DA's office has always been partnered with them. DA's office is working on another grant that would uh, help bring the community resource dogs in more um, with the recovery coaches and with like meetings, groups like that, to help uh, maybe keep, you know, help some people with their anxiety when they go into these things and trying to work their way through their, uh, through their struggle and overcome their, their addictions. So some other good news there is I might have a little bit of grant money to help with the dog. I'll go into that in a, in a little bit more because I like to end on a high note. Um, as you know, we had one officer leave this past year. The main reason was money. Um, it is what it is. That being said, I can't fill it right away. As we know, we'll all know the budget this year is very difficult. So I can't fill that position at least until January. Um, it also left a supervisor's position over a sergeant's position. What I'm going to do within the next few weeks is I'm going to uh, hire a company. This is the way we've been doing it for a number of years now. A uh, consulting company comes in, they'll give a written exam based on our policies and procedures, based on case law in Massachusetts, and based on criminal law. Um, passing that, they will then go into an assessment center where um, you know, other uh, either retired chiefs uh, or active chiefs or active lieutenants, captains, administrative people will then um, give them scenarios where they go through real life scenarios and would then be graded on that. From that, I'll be back in front of you, I figure, in three to four months uh, with a name, and hopefully we'll have a new supervisor and keep keep giving people uh, some incentive to move forward here. Uh, I did think forward with that and budget for it, so we're good there. We'll probably also need to do before the end of the year, uh, and, and I'll 
have a discussion with you later, either a lieutenant or another deputy chief uh, um, assessment center too, but that'll be further into the year, probably more towards the spring. Right now, I just need to get that sergeant, the, the supervisor on the street, I need to get squared away first. Uh, hopefully, we'll have them in place before January, because that's when we do shift changes, and I'm sure one of the midnight sergeants will be thrilled that there'll be a new sergeant, because they'll see daylight again. Um, so challenges, obviously, uh, the budget is every uh, maintenance uh, on the building is difficult. Uh, the HVAC system, the first day, uh, it got over 90 degrees, two of the systems went down. That was in fiscal 24's budget. I've done okay there. Eric, don't panic, I got some money to turn back to you <laughs> to pay for my problem in December that I know is coming. Um, so the HVAC's usually my biggest problem. Uh, we have one other problem that I'll be looking for uh, an article in October, and uh, I did my best to hold off buying some supplies and stuff that I normally would have purchased, trying to turn some money back at a discussion with Eric with this. Um, so that some of that cash will be there for FY25 for the October meeting when the free cash is certified. The uh, APU, the giant battery backup that runs the core systems in the station, it I just found out two months ago, its end of life is December 30th of this year. Uh, it's been on a maintenance agreement. It's got fairly new batteries in it um, because I've had the maintenance agreement. They replaced all the batteries a year ago when we had a failure with it. Um, they said, hey, it could last a year or two more, or it could last a few years, but we can't guarantee parts or anything else after December 30th of this year. That's not a good plan. Um, I always joke, hope it's not a plan. I can't hope that it'll keep working. Mm -hmm. We're going to have to replace that. That's part of the redundancy. That gives me a, up to two hours of power to the core state, parts of the station, the radios, the servers. Um, if that goes down, I've got nothing left. So I lose commercial power, goes to generator, I lose generator, goes to APU. After that, I have, I have nothing. I don't even have a squirrel to run on a wheel to try to light up a light bulb, I got nothing. So uh, we've trying to take care of the generator issue. Um, the fire chief did a lot of work. He got uh, the fire department, my station, and I believe one of the well sites uh, hooked up so that we can pull in FEMA or FEMA generators, try and hook them up. This APU will hopefully give me that time frame to go steal one from the National Guard, from another town, get a commercial one if we have a catastrophic failure. How much are you looking at for that APU? Right, I'm waiting uh, I'm waiting to do a couple of, uh, we gotta do a little bit of electrical work in there too. So the electrician just gave me some quotes, but it's, it's gonna be right about 30,000. Okay. I just, uh, I'm sure you already know this, but we've got a tight timeline on the deadline for um, articles for the October town meeting, which sounds ludicrous. No, no, that's it's July, like, but like August first. You know, right? Yeah, yeah. So I'm, it's like it's like it's like high school. Yeah, the thirtieth. I'll hand it in. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate that. Thank you. The ink might still be wet on it too. You never know. No dog is different No, that's actually, I, I think next week. I just got the, the Charlie, God bless him, was on, uh, Charlie Baker, the custodian, was on vacation last week. God bless him. He, he sent me one of the quotes. Um, the deputy chief was on vacation. He's back. So I wanted to sit down with him, go over it, and, and uh, have him put the article together for you. And we'll get that, um, we'll, we should have that middle of next week at the latest. I have everything together it's just add it up and put it on paper and Eric while you're here I'm going to do it from free cash yes. okay so there we go I even found my funding source <laughs> um, so uh, the other challenges no, what uh, it's well yeah it's I'll have, look I'll sharpen the pencil as much as I can but. in that case it's 40 Eric <laughs> um, yeah, no, it should be under 30 from the looks of it. It should be right around 26, I think. Uh, let's see. Vehicles. <laughs> uh, I'm doing well with what I have. I have one that really kind of needs to be put to, put out to pasture. And uh, hopefully any of the <laughs> vendors not watching because I'm going to trade it in. But um, it... it 
I'm waiting to see what we can get. I've been trying to buy the hybrids, the Ford um, police interceptor hybrids. Um, I'm being told that that might be very difficult to do. I, I couldn't get one last year. Um, I might be having a hard time this year. The Tahoes are actually, um, should actually come in cheaper. Yeah, I may be able to get them. I don't know what I can even get my hands on. It's kind of weird right now. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, I got to do something. I have a, I have two in the budget, and one really needs to, like I said, be put out to pasture. So, one way or another, I will figure out something before June thirtieth, twenty twenty five. Again, I, I should be in pretty good shape. Uh, last year, I, I struggled, as some of you know, with the salaries. We had some issues with officers out. Uh, I've never been that close on the salary line before in my life. Um, but we made it uh, without having to get a transfer. Uh, but I don't think people realize how that becomes pretty difficult with scheduling people and moving them around and, and trying to get adequate coverage uh, on adequate days. Um, you know, what you can get away with staffing this town on a, on a Monday night, you can't do on Thursday through Sunday. And uh, sometimes I don't think people realize that that type of difficulty we have. Um, on the positives, um, I'll go back to Ziva, because everybody loves her. Uh, the DA's office has a grant. They're going to actually be outfitting one of uh, our existing cruises with a new kennel and a new, um, a new warning system, cooling system, so that if the car, right now my biggest fear with her is uh, we really have to watch her when she's in the uh, in the kennel in the car by herself because um, we don't have an alarm system in it. Usually, what you do on a canine system on a canine car, you put uh, an alarm system where it usually will set the lights and the siren off, lower the windows if it gets too hot. Um, those systems are fairly expensive; don't have any money for them, so we can get one. Uh, the DA's office, through a grant that they're doing, um, is going to allow me to get a whole new kennel in a new car uh, that we can take care of her for probably in the next four or five years anyways. Um, also in that grant, um, there's, it, I haven't finalized it yet, but there's probably money to pay uh, her health insurance for the year. No, it sounds kind of right, her pet insurance, pet insurance for the year. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it is health insurance for yeah. pets, yeah. Um, I mean, she's an employee, so. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, pay for that. And, and a few other expenses, as well as reimburse me for um, Officer Harrington when he goes to events um, or support um, support groups in other communities or even in our community if they come here. What we've done is pool. What the DA has really done is we pulled all the dogs. There's 20 dogs in, in the county now. So if somebody has, let's say, a school has a an untimely death. Uh, student or something. We pull the dogs, we get to see who's available, we send the dogs there to help out with the guidance counselors and the other grief. Um, we've been sending them to uh, various uh, senior housing. Uh, Derek was in Whitman yesterday with Zebra at a YMCA program. Um, it's, it's a really good resource and it's great to have that many that we can share them and send them around. So and again, when uh, the district attorney's office is, is helping us on financially with that, that's wonderful. Uh, on another note on that, Bridgewater State University is doing a study on comfort dogs, uh, where they've observed the dogs. They're uh, working with some school systems as well in the county to see the impact. They're also looking to see the impact the dogs have on uh, drug endangered kids, um, and um, hopefully that study will be completed in September. And uh, I'm, I'm actually proud to say in October, the International Association of Chiefs of Police is a obviously worldwide group based in the US. Uh, they have a co uh, conference every year, usually in the United States. I think it's only been to Canada. But they don't usually leave the continental US. Uh, it's one of the largest not the largest conference for law enforcement in the world. 
if you need to buy anything from uh, porta potties to helicopters, if you go to their trade show, you could buy anything under the sun. It's amazing. Brand new technology. They'll show you. It's it's a it's a great experience. And on top of that, uh, they give classes, um, and you can do different career tracks within those classes. Anyways, long story short. Um, the district attorney, uh, myself, and the Hingham chief, along with uh, some personnel from the DA's office, will actually be presenters this year doing a, a class on the comfort dogs. So I'm, I'm pretty excited about that. Along with Bridgewater State, they'll be presenting their findings. So uh, that's it's kind of exciting. It's something that you know a lot of people don't get a chance to do something like that. So that's awesome. kind of thrilled for it. Yeah. Um, so the number funny, one Ziva fan has got questions. Funny you say that. So, <laughs> so I am going to smuggle Ziva in. Officer Harrington will be there. I plan on smuggling Ziva in. They, they. I was reading the dog policy, and I, I think I can. I got to work around. So, we plan on bringing at least two of the, um, <laughs> two of the comfort dogs. To I classes. think you literally have a top fan thing on Facebook yeah, for Ziva because you're so into Ziva. <laughs> <Nice job. laughs> so, um. Yeah, I mean, how can you have a class about dogs without having a dog there, right? So hopefully we're going to have at least two of the dogs there, too. Uh, officer Ford, who was one of the first, actually he was the first officer in the county to get a, a comfort dog, uh, is one of the presenters as well. So it'll be fun. Did you say where that was going to be held this year? In Boston, at this, uh, in the seaport, the conference, the convention oh, nice. stuff. Nice. nice. In October. Nice. Um, my last kind of positive thing, if... If any of you have ever been around Whitman Hanson High School in the past probably 12 years, uh, usually the third or fourth week of July, uh, you'll notice tons of kids running around there. Uh, it's the district attorney's summer day program, also known as the Dare Camp. Uh, this year's going to be its 27th year. Wow. We've hosted it, uh, prior to me being here, we hosted it uh, at various times and it moved around the county a bit. But Whitman Hanson being kind of in the center of the the county and uh, having very nice facilities. We've been the host, uh, Whitman and us have co-hosted it for at least the past 10 years. Uh, and we will be co-hosting again, uh, not next week, the week after. Uh, so 700 plus kids from all over the county get to come and get a free, free week of camp. Um, it's a lot of fun. And uh, I'm looking forward to it. Yes. We want in on the foam action. The foam, yeah, that's yeah, that's what we I'm want. I'm gonna have in to on. talk to the fire chief about that. Yeah. Chief Thompson was was big on that. I think he'd be out there right now rebuilding that foam machine uh, <laughs> in preparation for it each year. Uh, I'm not sure Robbie is quite as enthusiastic as, as Jerry was. Uh, so, anyways, we'll be on. We'll be doing that at the end of the month. As I said, I'll probably be back in front of you in a couple few months with some other good news being a promotion. And uh, if anybody has any questions or anything, let me know. Anybody Please. have any questions? You mentioned the helicopter. When we, are we, we have money for a helicopter? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you would not believe the stuff. That's just unbelievable. It's crazy. Actually, dare camp, there should be a helicopter. Okay. But we it's not a, us. Can we get a porta potty? <laughs> can only rent those. <laughs> yes, sir. Does, does the town have a motorcycle? We do. Does anybody use it? Oh, it gets used quite a bit, believe it or not. Really? Yeah, so, um, yes, it gets, it'd probably get used more if, if I had staffing all the time. It's hard to transport a prisoner on a Oh, I know. Motorcycle, so. <laughs> so uh, I try to win this. You know, I only got a couple guys on the road, and you usually kind of like, I'm sorry, I know you're like, today would be a great day. Well, today would be too hot, but some days are a great right. day to use a bike. One of the things we're involved with, um, Semlec, I think I've mentioned that before, Southeastern Mass, Law Enforcement Consortium, we're part of Semlec. Every town, uh, it's it's Plymouth County, it, it goes into Norfolk and Bristol County. Various towns have joined it, actually, born born south, uh, born east, I'm sorry, on the Cape have also uh, their own LEC. And then uh, we're kind of at the dividing line with uh, groups that are called Metro LEC. Um, we're part of SEMLEC. Part of SEMLEC, and I, I try to tell people this, it's like an insurance policy. So you provide to SEMLEC, there's various teams. I'm actually the control chief for 
for the mop unit, the motor unit. Um, it, I have one officer, Officer Arsenal, Leo Arsenal, is assigned to that. The deputy chief actually goes out and does it a lot too because he was part of the mop unit um, prior to Officer Arsenal doing it. So people will be like, well, why do we need a motorcycle unit? Well, Hanson doesn't. Um, but I have officers that are trained in that skill. They practice in that skill monthly with trained instructors. I'm keeping them up. It keeps officers interested in doing something. We also have officers uh, on the search and rescue team. There's also what's called a CIT team, which um, it's a crisis intervention team. I have an officer assigned to that. In turn, what do I get? If we have uh, something we need to find evidence or, God forbid, a, a drowning victim, uh, we have a dive team to do recoveries. Uh, we have a detective team that I could call in to help all on things. Um, the search and rescue when we had a missing person a few years ago, they came in when, off the top of my head in the first couple of searches they did that would have cost the town of Hanson. Not only would I not be able to get that many people, but it saved us about $30,000 to bring them in. So I just call this an insurance policy. So the amount of money I spent to send three officers a month out to training, plus the honing skills and learning new things, um, it, it's well worth what I can get back. Plus that networking, the regional skills of economy, yeah. it's all great. And there's yeah. also, the, they also have SWAT. Um, we don't have any members on SWAT right now, but if I have a barricaded suspect or somebody, then I have them, I have that resource and be here in no time. So um, we do have a bike. The deputy chief is probably shaking right now, not knowing why, because that's kind of his baby. And he's like, we kind of need a new bike. Yeah, I know. And actually, the motorcycle came to us. Um, Cheaper than a car. Well, yeah, but it, it came from us. It was a donation. Actually, we have yeah. never paid for a motorcycle. Um, both of them have been a donation from, from uh, Sullivan's. Oh, yeah. So, which is very grateful for them and was very generous of them. Any other questions? No question, but I just want to say, as far as mental health goes, you've always, I say this every year, every time you give this re report, I'm just so grateful for your leadership in trying to partner to make sure that not, mental health isn't punitive. It's, it's big for me in, in my mission and my work. So when I see communities, and I've always been a fan of yours, is why I've always really tried to support um, all the stuff in the initiatives that you guys do, because a lot of people are afraid to access mental health services because they're afraid they're going to get arrested or penalized or it's going to follow them the rest of their lives. They're afraid to make phone calls they're, when they're isolated for a thousand different reasons. And you've really tried to make sure that people feel safe. And I think that, you know, it, it has to be said out loud that you, I really hope that this legacy continues because you've done an amazing job. So I really appreciate that. Thank you. But it's, it's not me. There's a lot of smart people in, in, around here and it's, it's the, it's the connection with the other chiefs, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. um, it's always been that since before I became a chief, it was the network. And I try to push that on people. Again, that goes back to my whole thing on why do I want you to go to in-service? Because the patrolman you're sitting next to now might be the chief you're sitting next to 10 years from now. Mm -hmm. um, but no, the, the, the mental health stuff, uh, the forerunner, the, the big push um, for that clinician too came from uh, Carver. And it just happened to the chief and I was talking, and he said he was doing this. I go, doesn't it make sense for us to try and do bigger? And that's how that one started, just mm -hmm. on a side conversation. Um, but thank you. But the officers have bought in. They're, they understand it. It's a lot different than when I started. Twenty. But that's a legacy, too, though, is that you've now got officers. This is a routine part of what they're used to, what is part of the job. It's destigmatized. Mm -hmm. That's important. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's a legacy. Yeah. I, I can't take it. I know you're well, too humble. Take you, you're gonna, so yeah, humble. I, just I take can't, it. but thank you. I just look and <laughs> yeah. I see what I think is the best practice and, and try to try to move that, move it along. It's all, it's all about serving the citizens and it's about making sure the officers have the tools and the training and the education they need to do their job. If you break it down to those few things, it's not that hard. Any other questions? All right, thank you, and please thank everybody for everything they do. Sure, thank you very much. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, with screen, uh, that brings us to line item transfer. Hey, Chief. Yes. What are they repairing at the end of Brook? Oh, yes, Company. It's not on the agenda, but. Uh, <laughs>
I know, but I just just to ask you because it's okay, so like they're, they're finishing up the gas work. Oh, and you need to get it done by the end of this week. Uh, oh, okay. So it's going to do with the um, that valve, right? Work. Yep. Sorry for the interruption. You might want to. I've got, I've, I, no no. debate on that. No, no, no we're not debate. No, no, no deliberation. No, 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 there's a room on. Thank you. Room. Take care. Huh? There's Take a care. room underneath the room. Literally a wall down. Really? There. Yes. You should see how big it is. Really? Yeah. How did you get to see how big it was? Just, I, could, I happened to go by and there was nobody in the way and I could look down. It was like, holy oh, man, that thing was huge. Well, of course, now I want to see it. <laughs> uh, okay, <laughs> Mr. Kinsher, thank you. Okay, no, thank you for having me. Um, you know, we processed the last one that's going to be charged in FY24 budget. And uh, like I would say, it's like we're trying to bring it into a soft landing. And um, we did some tra internal transfers that need to be done because so, some of the accounts were <laughs> short. So it's like a, a transfer between one account and another account. And the only way we can do that without a town meeting is uh, between May 1st and July 15th every year with the approval of both the select board and the finance committee. So that's why um, I have this before you. Um, sorry you didn't have it in advance, but this was like late breaking has think bills were coming in today and stuff we we're modifying it and so forth when is finance uh, meeting are they going to be this week <coughs> i don't have to talk to kevin to see if he can uh, yeah. have a meeting even if it's a via zoom or whatever yeah. he's, he's already approved a couple of these but there was <laughs> some other ones that have come in okay so um, is there anything you know that you in particular want to call out to us that um <coughs> I, I could probably do like a uh, three minute summary to show oh, through it quick great. all right um, the first one is just uh, going from an accountant expense light item to a, um, to a salary because we're a little short in the, uh, the clerical position there. Um, the second one, uh, subtotal is 15000 That is something that the, um, the fire chief asked for a line item transfer because he wants to um, use some money for a pediatric emergency equipment and equipment to handle ion battery fires. I have no idea what that is, but uh, I'm an accountant, so I'm just, I think he thinks it's worthwhile, and he has money in his overtime, so he wanted to transfer it over. Okay. Um, okay, the, the next group of... Um, I think that's your electric cars. It is for electric cars. Oh, it is? Okay. Oh, they, yeah, and, they, and, they, and they, are, they have a high incidence of, of electrical fires, and... Um, and um, they're it's sort of a, difficult to put out. Yeah, they're very difficult to put out, and a lot of times they're not quite sure where they are, so it takes a while for them to figure it out. So there's a whole backstory on that, but um, if Chief O'Brien says he needs it, then I yeah. tend to think we want to give it to him. So yeah, um, it's amazing to me. Like I've talked to all the different problems, like the fire, the police, the highway, like car or whatever. And sometimes I always try to get extra little knowledge and stuff to learn because it's pretty in depth like it's a yes. craft each one's a craft yeah these guys don't dabble <laughs> yeah, they're you know. into it yeah they're all in yep. so um okay so um i'll just run through real quick um we have a bunch of we had some money left over in the group health insurance like thirty four thousand that we want to disperse among some accounts um the first one is um exec you know i get executive assistant was 141 dollars and 46 cents was over um Town admin salary, there was 3285 and that was some buyback uh, vacation that was in the contract um, that we had to pay. Now, um, in the assessor's office, there was 9761 that had to do with that lease buyout. That's just, I don't call it a buyout, but it's like a crew vacation time and stuff she had to pay out because she retired. Um, uh, the next one is uh, 3000 There's two in the treasurer's office. Um, 3300 for the treasurer's um, line item, and that's because um, there was a, a dual, like the old treasurer and new treasurer worked together for a couple of weeks for a transition plan. And then the 4000 underneath it is because when the treasurer collector was out and there was no treasurer collector, the assistant treasurer and collector received a stipend for the extra work. Yes. That wasn't budgeted for. Okay. Um, the next two, um, $89 and 4181 that's um, a legal bill that came in. Um, I asked um, Lisa, there's some tax title properties in probate court that she got billed for. Um, you know, so that that's needed. But on a positive end, she's trying to collect the money, and um, these costs can be added to the people's bills when they finally do pay, so that, that's okay. 
Um, a small one, $120 um, for the admin fees, um, $631 over in uh, legal services. Compared to other towns, I, I, I usually expect more. Um, public properties is um, like $908 in overtime. Um, that wasn't budgeted for, and then there's six hundred fifty-six dollars in extra expenses. That um, is public properties. Public, but that's a building department. It's a building department. Like Charlie takes care of it. He does all the maintenance. Okay, I just I've never heard us refer to it as that. Okay, so it's Charlie basically. Yeah, Char yeah, basically those two okay. lines. Like, right. Yeah, Charlie's OT and Charlie's expenses. Okay, if you want to call it call yeah. it that. Um, so it's like a forty-seven dollar thing. There was a forty-eight dollar on the Hanson bus budget two-mile bus budget, and then um, 7000 is needed for the highway survey salary because um, basically there was, um, we're paying kind of two highway surveyors because one was on administrative leave, mm -hmm. and the, but it was offset by vacant positions, so the net effect was like 7000 So that took care of that. Um, okay, the next group is just um, $6,000. Um, you know, Mary wanted to treat transfer um, some money out of the VNA services because uh, they didn't need as much this year to her expenses. So um, she was running short there, so she requested that. And um, then the library had a $410 clerical pot, and then the uh, they have 2400 in um, utilities. So the total money that was shifted around, we just shifted around different line items, and the total is like 59000 So. Um, if you have any questions on any of this, just let me know. But um, did that, anybody have any questions? I was just wondering. Um, I know the the assessors. It, it, these large budget numbers for the various salaries and clerical support. This is because of buyouts and stuff like that. Yeah, it, it's funny. Now that I'm seeing this too, um, a lot of times um, it goes back to the budget. Like, why wasn't like this budget? Why wasn't it covered? Budgeted for. And at least and I talked, and we're thinking for the next budget season, maybe we'll create uh, a line item in the employee benefits budget and kind of anticipate people that are going to be buying off like the vacation time mm. and like sick time and stuff well, that, like that. That's, that's a lot of money right there. Because we are going to have some retirements next year, and so we want to try, you know, that we can already anticipate. So, yeah. Right. So I'm thinking yeah. the best might, way might be to just put a line item in the benefits that's there and try to come up with an estimate of what it's going to be. That's almost 20000 It's It's over $20,000. It's quite a big chunk of that fifty nine grand. Yeah. I just, just no. drew my eye to it. No, absolutely. It was, that That goes back to like, it's like a, I don't want to say it's like a slap in the face, but it's like, hey, can I, can I step up the our game on the budgeting and the right. forecasting and stuff? Right. And it all comes to, it all comes to report cards right here, you know, that comes out. But that's something that we talked about. So maybe in the FY26 budget, we'll put a, like a line item for that. Anybody have any other questions? Mm. Okay, uh, then I will entertain a motion to transfer between departmental appropriations in accordance with Chapter 77 of the Acts of 2006, amending Chapter 44, Section 33B of the Massachusetts General Laws as printed here. So moved. Second. Oh, I'm sorry, for FY 2025 year in line. Um, okay, so did I have a first? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Um, all in favor? Aye. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, and then, um, oh, yeah, sure. Um, do you need all of us or just, this is a clean one to say now. Oh, yeah, okay, you know what, mine has my writing all over it. She's right, I should probably. I think that happened last year too. That's because I, I write all kinds of little notes to myself, for better or worse. All right, thank you for taking one for the team, in on that one. Thank you for um, taking notes in. Yes, thank you for not scribbling on that. Um, okay. Uh, open, I scribble on my agenda. Open special town meeting warrant. Ms. Green. Yes, so um, amazingly enough, it's time for us to start thinking about the October special town meeting, uh, which will take place on October 7th, the first Monday in October. Um, so I'm asking the board to open the warrant so that we can start gathering articles uh, from the different departments and start working on the warrant for that. You know, we seems that we just got over May 
uh, annual special town meeting and then the June special town meeting, but already can get it can, some of us are still not over it. So. <laughs> <laughs> I can only speak for myself. Um, okay, um, I will entertain a motion to open the special town meeting warrant for October 7th, 2024. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay, great. Um, discuss and vote Deputy Police Chief Contract. Ms. Green. So actually, um, Madam Chair, that was already done um, at one of our last meetings. So I don't know why it's still in here. Um, this we voted that in executive session. Oh, and uh, we're required to vote it in open okay. session after we voted in executive session. So if you could give us a layup of the high points of that um, contract, and then we can vote it in open session. And okay, similarly, yes. um, it's for your contract as well. But while we're doing that and you're pulling it up, um, I'll go to a couple of other agenda items and we can circle back when you let me know that you're ready. Um, accept the following donations received in May 2024, $55 to the library, $50 to the fire department, $200 to the Council on Aging, and $100 to the Veterans Gift Fund. I will entertain a motion to accept those donations. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. All right, lovely. Um, do we know whether we are copacetic with Capellini Enterprises, whether everything is on lockdown? Yes, yeah, see, um, all financial obligations to the town have been paid. Um, and the building inspector has been out there inspecting the property as well as the deputy fire chief, and there are no concerns regarding um, any... That's amazing. So okay, great. That awesome. is good to so know. with that, I will entertain a motion to approve the Class Two auto dealer um, license for Capellini Enterprises. So moved. Second. All in okay. favor? Okay, great. That brings us to a point, Kurt uh, Tarvis, to the Hanson Historic Commission. And I noticed in his email, he actually also the mentioned CCC. he wanted to do Capital Improvement Committee. Uh, so I will entertain a motion to appoint T Kurt Tarvis to the Hanson Historical Commission and Capital Improvement so Committee. Second. Okay, all in favor? Um, appoint Howard Dillon to the Open Space Committee. I will entertain a motion. So moved. Second. All in favor? Okay. Select board calendar update. I think Lynn had sent an email and there's a copy in, um, in your packet. Uh, there were some dates moved around. The thought process is to get things done earlier in September. Right, I, it, I, I wish that this, we could have a version. Like redlined or something? No, that just, oh. that just goes chronologically. Oh. This, this one kind of, it, it's kind of, I, I see what she was doing. But I need, it's easier for me to plug it all into my calendar if it's quiet. So you want to know what are the meetings, period. Right. Not like all the other little. Oh, no, I, I like yeah. to know all that stuff, but the meetings, hi, you know, I know select board, select board, select board. Okay, you know, yeah, I'm sure I, she I can plug it right into I'm my I'm sure calendar. she can sort it that way. Yeah, okay. Um, no problem. Um, did anybody have any questions or uh, concerns about the uh, calendar? Uh, just questions about just trying to get something going on the books with the school. Um, yes. Yeah. Let me reach out. I did leave a message and then I just didn't follow up. Um, maybe for the, I'm trying to think what meeting would be the best. Well, I'll just ask what the availability is right. and we'll just take it from there. Um, okay, I will entertain a motion to approve the um, revised 2024-2025 select board calendar. So moved. Second. All in favor? Okay. Um, and Ms. Green, that brings us back to you again. Are you? Okay. Yes, yes, I'm good to go. Um, all right, so police, uh, Deputy Police Chief Michael Casey, um, basically on his contract, this is going to be a three year, uh, a uh, three year contract. So July 1, 2024 to June 30, 2027. Um, on the basically compensation, um, right now, uh, let's see, he is at a rate of $147,900 annually. Will be paid in equal uh, installments beginning June 30, 2025. So this is for the next year. Um, he will also receive a 
$2,100 stipend each year that will be paid in the last payroll of August. And this is for um, his the in-service training that he, he um, um, participates in every year. Okay. Uh, let's see. This and his contract does allow him um, to to do details. However, that is after all other offices have been offered the details. Um, so, if there's no takers on any detail, then this this does allow him to do a detail um, under those circumstances. Uh, let's see. I will entertain a motion to approve um, the deputy police chief Michael Casey's contract. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, great. And Ms. Green, that brings us to town administrative contract. Yes. Let me get to that. And again, I want to reiterate, these were voted on in executive session in the affirmative, and we're coming out and we're voting on them in open session. Okay, so the town administrative contract, again, it's a three-year contract. Uh, July 1, 2024 to June 30, 2027. Uh, the compensation on that is a 2% increase, uh, which is 151,541.64 for the first year, 154,571.88 for the second year, 158,436.18 for the third year. Again, that's a 2% increase each year. Um, it also includes uh, educational stipend for a Juris Doctorate degree, which I do hold, of uh, $5,000 for the first year, $5,000 for the second year, and $4,500 in the third year. To be payable in the um, first payroll date of December each year. Uh, this also includes uh, 30 days of vacation with a um, possible carryover of not more than 10 days um, or via with the permission of the board. Um, there will be uh, accrued sick time at one and a quarter days per month with a maximum carryover of 30 sick days per fiscal year. Um, professional development and expenses that are included with that um, as well as um, fees into for memberships such as the Mass Municipal Management Association, Mass Municipal Association. I think um, we're good. Oh, um, you're good? Yeah. Okay. I think that's a good, <laughs> it, that's a sufficient <laughs> level to of give detail as much and as if possible. people want more, they can ask for a copy. They're actually all online, so they yep. can find all these contracts um, online. I will entertain a motion to approve the um, town administrator's contract. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Okay, great. Um, that brings us to one day liquor licenses. Um, we have a John Griffin, um, 728, and Bridget Barrasel on 9 8 2024. I will entertain a motion to approve the one day liquor licenses. So moved. Second. All in favor? Okay. Um, I will, that brings us to minutes um, from our June 25th meeting. I will entertain a motion to approve those minutes. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. And then that brings us to urgent committee updates. Um, and sorry, heavy sarcasm. Um, crickets. <laughs> I mean, I'll update you guys at a future meeting, but we did have the South Shore Chamber of Commerce come to our Economic Development Committee. It was awesome. He had a lot of really great ideas, um, and we're going to start forging a little path forward, a little partnership with them. So that was exciting, at least to me it was. Um, any High Street Park? High Street, yeah. Um, we had presentation by Lisa and by Tony uh, to just go over some basics of just some of the, the layouts. And uh, we're just going to, we, we meet the first and third open meeting if people want us to go. I think people should s start to see some movement as we start to plan around getting ourselves ready for grants and whatnot. I'm, I'm hoping that we're going to start seeing some traction sooner than later. We presented, you know, what type of funding sources we have, um, things like that. We do have an opening, so we have to petition the Conservation Commission because we, because uh, Mr. Clemens did represent um, that board, but since he's no longer there, there's a vacancy there. So we did recognize that at the meeting, um, which means that we have to pull somebody else in. 
I think he might be pursuing whether or not he could be a citizen at large because he still has interest in that uh, given how long he's been there. So I, I, I have to figure that out as well. That's basically it. Okay. Uh, highway? Any, well, we're kind of waiting. Until we're waiting. Yeah. yeah we, okay. We waiting for Godot, the as they say. Yeah. Um, Recreation Commission, nothing on that. Haven't heard anything on the school agreement committee. Um, Town Administrator Report. Ms. Green, what say you? Okay. Madam Chair, Madam Vice Chair, members of the board. So um, we've been very busy with the start of the new fiscal year, FY25. Um, FY24 is now behind us, and we're all working on um, closing the books on that. So the town department, our town accountant, um, treasurer collector, um, all being recognized for all the work that they're doing right now to make sure that we close out the, the uh, prior fiscal year um, responsibly and under all the rules and regulations. Um, we are having, we had a first phase of um, candidates for highway director position. Uh, we are inviting uh, one candidate back for a second interview. That will happen this Thursday. Um, and then once we finalize that interview and finalize our, our um, reference checks, we'll bring uh, a candidate forward on, for the board, hopefully July 16th. Um, Pratt Place Culvert Replacement. Um, we have uh, had for dancers working on the plans for that. Um, when we did receive a, uh, an estimate a few years back, the cost for the replacement of the culvert was about one million to about 1.25 million. However, um, with Vedantis, what they what they are designing is they're going to be using a temporary bridge to allow residents to access Pratt Place while construction is happening. Um, not as expensive as we thought and a much better idea rather than using easements or behind people's properties and things like that. So all of that's off the table and we're looking at temporary bridge. So does uh, that free up some ARPA money for us? I will get to that in a moment. Oh, okay. <laughs> all right. All right. Um, they've also um, using pre-cast sections, um, which are huge savings. So basically what they would need to do is just do a lot of the drilling work into the, the ground and then just lower the um, pre, prefabbed um, pieces in, which saves us a lot of money and time. So for right now, like details are still being worked out, but the current quote on this is 665000 which is $400,000 less than the quote that we got yeah. prior. Um, again, we, we, we're, they're still working out some final some final um, tweaks and, and, and details, but I did reach out to um, Tom O'Brien from Plymouth County and asked them if we were able to shift the um, projects due to this um, mm -hmm. much lower cost. He said we were, cool. um, but, again, but again, this is the Plymouth County bucket, <coughs> so it's it's very restricted of what we can use it for. Um, so. Uh, uh, we, uh, stormwater management ba basins were kind of taught, thrown out in there. Um, but if anybody has any other projects, I can look and see if it's eligible. But right now, it looks like we are going to have some extra money, which is that wonderful. That is amazing. News. And I also heard, heard Mr. Balanzola say tonight that other towns might not be using all of their money. So there could be more money. Mm -hmm. So besides what we were allocated. So I'd like to be getting in on that as well. We um, just have to find projects that fit within the criteria and get those applications. Well, done. so can you brainstorm with, um, you know, department heads and, you know, um, and others and come with a, a list of, of projects and, and then let's just take it. Because I want to get every cent we can. I, yeah, I hope to, to reach out to people and maybe bring something forward. Um, July 16, if not August 6 at the latest, because okay. as you said, they have to allocate the money by the end of this year. So, uh, but that that's wonderful news for us. Really, it really news. is. That's great. Um, I mean, Plus, I think it will be less aggravation for the people that live there, 100%. right? Because it's just going to be dropped in and then put it instead of it all being made while you know, right, right, one hundred percent. Yeah, you know, the temporary bridge, they bring it, they secure it, people use that. The new bridge goes in, they come back, they pick it up, the, the temporary bridge, and they take it away. Yeah. So, um, and again, the cost of it is not as much as people thought. Um, so, 
this was really a great surprise and a really good thing for Hanson. Um, past couple of weeks, I have devoted a lot of time to personnel matters that I cannot speak of in open session um, in public records requests. Um, people, I don't know, all of a sudden people are interested in lots of public records. So, um, And I want to say that the assistant assessor position, which we have posted in-house, we do have an internal candidate. Oh. Um, so um, the Denise, well, Alexander and myself will be meeting with the internal candidate um, hopefully on Monday. Um, and then the candidate will go forward uh, before the board of assessors. Uh, they are they are the appointing authority, so they will make the recommendation and, and then we'll bring it back to the board to recognize that, that candidate. Um, and I will be out of the office tomorrow, but then I will return on Thursday. So the office will open at 9 um, when, when Lynn returns to the office tomorrow. And that uh, concludes my town administrator report for this week. All right. Well, that is amazing. Um, Does anybody have any questions? All right. Well, then I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. All right. Lovely. Aye.